What's going on, people? episode of a cycle, a cycle of violence. Young kids now, and it's not even a trend with children now, but this is a, a particular message to help deter young kids from resorting to living a life in the streets or resorting to conducting criminal acts in, acts in the streets if they can help it. That's what the operative phrases are, if they can help it. The reality is for some that they can't help but to resort to the streets, especially if their homes are broken, incredibly dysfunctional, no parental supervision taking place, they're latchkey kids, my heart goes out to the children, my heart goes out to the children who aren't receiving the nurturing and support that they need. But you know what, I'm gonna share, I'm gonna share a story. It's brief though, it's gonna be brief. I'm gonna call these messages a cycle of violence. I could remember when I was growing up, I was always, uh, again, I was a very inquisitive child, observing my surroundings and, and watching people and of course the late well I'm not gonna date myself but I'm a man of a certain age and I can remember when I was a kid and you know I was around older kids or there were older kids who in my building one of them always caught my attention because he was the oldest I guess brother to two of his siblings, one little sister and one the younger brother. His name was Angel. So Angel, you know, was always, was about maybe three grade levels higher than I was, you know popular kid, seemed he had this way about him, this nice aura about him, where he was popular, and he seemed like he was very, uh, I guess, looked up to, you know, like his kids, his, not his kids, but his siblings looked up to him, and other kids in the neighborhood looked up to him, kids in my building looked up to him, it's thorough out here. So you already know. Um, and after about maybe a year of seeing him, you know, this kid was always, he seemed, you know, come from a nice family, single mom, right? A single mother household, never saw a father around them. Single mom, like she was struggling but at least providing for her children, probably providing a roof over their heads and stuff. Soon after, soon after, or maybe a short little time, I would say a year after that, I stopped seeing Angel in, in, in school. Right, he, of course he went to the next year, but then I stopped seeing him in school. But I would see him in the building, and when I saw him in the building, he had on, you know, the newest name brand or the newest clothes, the latest clothes, name brand expensive clothes. 
and was wearing jewelry, right? One time, another person started, you know, kids talk. Because you see the thing about children, children, you know, the adults think that children, you know, are small and won't remember things. But children are very impressionable, yes. But children are very, are like sponges and they soak up, we soak things up when we're children. So the word on the street was that Angel decided to become some form of a drug a drug pusher a drug dealer and he connected with this older dude named Mike and they started running the streets and I would notice now and at this time Angel at this time when he was running the streets was about maybe 14 years old 14 years old this young kid and at that time, I was younger than him. I was about maybe 10. This kid was walking around with truck jewelry. I mean, we're talking about rope, gold rope chains around his neck, bracelets, the finest clothes. One time, it was one winter, I saw this boy walk by in this fur coat fur, fur, matching fur hat, fur coat, and not something fake, authentic, I'm talking about authentic, right, so, but his, his brothers and sisters, his younger brother and sister, were still in school, and they, their appearance it seemed like Angel was taking care of them too, and their mom. Their appearance was definitely upgraded ever since Angel decided to stop going to school and living a life of the street. One day, and this circulated among the adults, this piece of news circulated among the adults one day the adults were talking and you know kids are eavesdropping and then they're spreading the, the information apparently Jose I'm sorry not Jose Angel was found in a basement Hung from like a series of like electric cords or something like that to that effect when with burn marks and stab wounds around his body and in his chest like in his torso somewhere in a neighborhood that he wasn't I guess he was working or the word was that you know, some other pushers became jealous of his newfound success and how quick he became successful. And so, they killed him. And his friend Mike supposedly was on the run and then come to find out, he ended up getting locked up and doing some time in prison. And while he was in prison, he got murdered by other inmates because we, well, the kids, what the kids were saying from the adults is the adults never like to directly talk about news to the children. What our elders were saying was that Mike had something to do with setting his younger protege, his younger mentee, his younger friend, Angel, up in the street. 
and Angel, Angel's relatives, got wind of what the street was talking about and also had some relatives who were prison, in the same prison that um, Mike ended up serving time in for drug trafficking and got handled the same, well, the results were the same, he got killed too. So, Mike must have been maybe, that time like he was a, a, a man like they were saying he was you know early 20s so this is a message to the kids try to stay focused and not get caught up and not get caught up and enticed and into living a life of the streets and resorting to selling drugs it's not it's not it's very detrimental. You can get killed. You can get hurt. The cycle of violence continues. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe, share, and push the positive message. Not destructive, but positive. Always remember that. Be well.